In Corinthians it says, There's one body, but it has many parts. But all its many parts make up one body. We are all part of one church, regardless of our parish, ministry, or the groups we are in. We are one. For we were all baptized by one spirit, clergy and laity, all co-responsible for the mission of the church. Like unleavened bread, we are all molded together by the same spirit to form one body. Like the many who came before us, each part called to a life of sacrifice. Each one of us is blessed with various gifts and talents to share freely, to reach out, love, and support one another generously. Just like bread blessed and broken, our lives and the work of our hands are consecrated to be the living body of Christ, to be given and shared with all, to be a light to the world, we, His living body, are called to build strong evangelizing families to strengthen the fabric of the church, to raise a generation of young people passionately in love with Jesus, to continue to form the faith of generations and mold the future through Catholic education. We are to care for our elders, and shepherds who have cared for us to grow and sustain our places of worship and infrastructures and to encounter Jesus, be in communion with one another and be his witnesses to the world. We are the living body of Christ. Each one of us is a part of it. Together as one, we reflect Him. Let us each strive to be vibrant, evangelistic, and missionary Christians in our families, with our friends, and in our communities. Let us respond as one body of Christ. Be givers of our time, talent, and treasures. Let us pray, act, and give to build the church today for tomorrow. Catholic Foundation invites you to be a part of growing the mission of the church. Pick up a gift brochure and make a monthly pledge to help enable the vision of the Archdiocese. Or visit gift.catholicfoundation.sg for more information. Let us be a gift to the church. My dad's in the hospital now and doesn't look good. Are you free to come now? Let me be filled.
here today at church. Is there anything I can do for you? You're wonderful and such a good father. Hello, Father. How are you in Rome? We've been praying very hard for you. And such a good father. Even in just a smile, they would feel the father's love. From womb to tomb, our priests are there to give of themselves. In our greatest joys to our darkest times, they serve us. Let us pray for our priests to courageously follow after our Lord's heart. May our mother guide them in the times of struggle and sacrifice. Together with our brother priests, let us build a vibrant, evangelizing and missionary church. Hello, Father. My dad is in the hospital now and doesn't look good. Are you free to come now? Let me be filled with kindness and compassion for the one. From womb to tomb, our priests are there to give of themselves. In our greatest joys to our darkest times, they serve us. Let us pray for our priests to courageously follow after our Lord's heart. May our mother guide them in the times of struggle and sacrifice. Together with our brother priests, let us build a vibrant, evangelizing and missionary church.
Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Of the angel voices ringing out so sweetly, ringing out so clear. Have you seen the star shining out so brightly as a sign from God that Christ the Lord is here? And so we now invite you to join in with the angels and praise God in the carol, Angels We Have Heard on High.
countries like Sweden, certain festivals are also celebrated by Swedish communities all over the world in conjunction with the festival of Christmas. Most popular are the Feast of Saint Lucia 
and the lesser-known Feast of St. Stephen, celebrated on December the 13th and 26th, respectively. We hear of the two animals in the following texts of the Old Testament. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's creep. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3. And again, between two animals you are made manifest. Habakkuk chapter 3 
verse 2. The ox traditionally represents patience, the nation of Israel, while the donkey represents humility, the Gentiles, and the willingness to serve. this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us.
The feast of Christmas is celebrated even in countries where Christians form a very small minority of the population, as in Jordan. The choir will now sing a hymn to Mary in the distinctively Arabic style, which is characteristic of the hymns sung by our Christian brothers in the Middle East. Jesus came to reveal his Father, and he taught us how to pray. Though not a carol, the choir will now pray the words that Jesus himself taught us in a style that is distinctively Rwandan, in Swahili, one of the official languages of Rwanda.
although we would love to sing it during one of our masses here, we can't because we don't know what the celebrant would do. Anyway, please join in the next carol.
Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Those of you who knew me in the 70s and 1980s knew I worked with children. I still work with them. Okay? 
So if you would like to join us and sing, we sing for the glory of God, nothing else. Okay? Join us. The gates are open. We prepare ourselves now for the most important part of this evening, which is Holy Mass, when Christ will actually come among us. It is a practice in this cathedral to spend a few minutes before Mass in quiet silence. Tonight is special because we have to meditate and consider what is really going to happen. God coming among us. Thank you for coming earlier to appreciate and pray with us. Now we prepare for Mass, the real thing. Thank you.
My brothers and sisters, let us stand for the entrance hymn. Octavo calenda januari, luna decima octava. Inumeris transactis secule sa creatione mundi, quando in principio Deus creavi celum et terram, et hominem forma vida ad imaginem suam. Per multis et siam seculi, ex quo post diluvium, Altissimus in nubibus arcum possuverat, signum federis et pacis. A migratione abrahe, patris nostre in fide, Deur chalde orum seculo vigesimo primo. Ab egressu populi Israel de Egipto moi seduce seculo decimo tercio. Abung Sione David in regem, ano circite millesimo. Ebdomada sexagesima quinta, juxta Danielis profetiam. 
Olimpia de centesima nona gesima quarta. Apul becondita no septingensimo quinquagesimo secundo. Ano imperi Cesaris Octaviani Augusti quadragesimo secundo Toto orbe in pace composito Iesu Christus eternus Deus eterni que patris filius Mundum volens adventus suo pisimo consecrare. De Spiritu Sancto Conceptus, novem que post conceptione de cursis mensibus. In Bethlehem iude nascitur ex Maria Virgine, Factus homo. Nativitas Domini nostri Iesu Christi, Secundum Carnem. of every nation and people. From the very beginning of creation, you have been manifested love. 
when our need for our Savior was great, you send your Son to be born to the Virgin Mary. To our lives, he brings joy and peace, justice, mercy, and love. Lord, bless all who look upon this manger. May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise of our thoughts to him, who is God with us and Savior of all, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Christe. Chelsea's day,
Let us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant we pray that we who have known the mysteries of His light on earth may also delight in His gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness has seen a great light. On those who live in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. You have made their gladness greater. You have made their joy increase. They rejoice in your presence as men rejoice at harvest time as men are happy when they are dividing the spoils. For the yoke that was weighing on him, the bar across his shoulders, the rod of his oppressor, these you break as on the day of Midian. For all the footgear of battle, every cloak rolled in blood is burnt and consumed by fire. For there is a child born for us, a son given to us, and dominion is laid on his shoulders. And this is the name they give him, Wonder Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Wide is his dominion in a peace that has no end. For the throne of David and for his royal power, which he establishes and makes secure in justice and integrity. From this time onwards and forever, the jealous love of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Savior has been born to us, he is Christ the Lord. Today the Savior has been born to us, he is Christ the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. God's grace has been revealed and it has made salvation possible for the whole human race and taught us that what we have to do is to give up everything that does not lead to God and all our worldly ambitions. We must be self-restrained and live good and religious lives here in this present world while we are waiting in hope for the blessing which will come with the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. He sacrificed himself for us in order to set us free from all wickedness and to purify a people so that it could be his very own and would have no ambition except to do good. The word of the Lord. Joy, 
Today a Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census of the whole world to be taken. This census, the first, took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph set out for the town of Nazareth in Galilee and traveled up to Judea, to the town of David called Bethlehem, since he was of David's house and line, in order to be registered together with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In the countryside close by, there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took it in turns to watch their flocks during the night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them. They were terrified, but the angel said, Do not be afraid. Listen, I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, with the angel, there was a great throng of the heavenly hosts praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace to men who enjoy his favor. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, what is this great feast we are celebrating this evening? It is the feast of Christmas. But what is so great about this feast that Christians celebrate? We celebrate nothing less than the birth of Christ our Lord. We celebrate nothing less than the birth of our Saviour. This is the cause of rejoicing. And that is what the angel said. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This is the news of great joy to be shared by all people. Indeed, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the reason for the rejoicing of the church. Because 
It is not just only someone who is born, not just a great leader, but someone who is God made man and who is our Savior. The question that we need to address this evening is this. If you were to rejoice with the church, you must have this utter conviction in you that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, our Savior. Unless you share this conviction of the church and make it as your own, then there is no real reason for us to rejoice. Indeed, it is good to ask ourselves, why is it that in the world, many people seem to be rejoicing during this period of the year? Are they rejoicing because it is coming to the end of the year? You have just received your bonus. You can go shopping. People are taking leave. It's a good time to go for holidays, merrymaking, having fun. Is that the reason that people are rejoicing at this time of the year? Because it's a time for celebration. My dear brothers and sisters, the truth is, today Christmas is celebrated without the birthday boy. Christmas is celebrated in the world today without Christ. And there is a real danger in the world today, even in the midst of this Christmas celebration of rejoicing, the world is attempting to take Christ out of this celebration. That's the reason why in some parts of the world, we no longer address each other on Christmas, Merry Christmas or Holy Christmas. We address one another, we greet one another, Happy Holidays, or compliments of the season, I presume must be winter season, that we should compliment one another. But that is the reality, because people are not saying that they need a saviour. And this is the truth. Because many people in the world today, at most we can say, they are enjoying the effects of the birth of Christ. If there is peace, if there is love, if there are blessings from God, indeed it is true, the birth of Christ. Unfortunately, Many people are enjoying the effects of Christ's birth into this world, but they do not know who is the cause of their blessing. It is so true in life. Many of us, we are talented, we have good health, we have a good career, we are blessed with many things. But how many of us deep in our hearts know that all these things comes from God alone. Without Him, we are nothing. Many of us, we forget. We take all our blessings for granted and we even begin to think that we are the cause of our blessings. And this is the case the world does not believe they need a saviour. In a secular world, those who are humanist, they do not need God, neither do they need a saviour. Because they are telling us, we can save ourselves. We don't need anyone to save us. With technology, with human reasoning, with human power, we can do everything. We can even conquer Mars. We do not need God. And of course, we have some who go to the extreme, those who are in the New Age movement. They say, actually, there is no God. We are gods. We have all the inner energy, the power. We are gods. There are no other gods. 
My dear brothers and sisters, when we fail to realize that we are finite beings, creatures of God, we forget our position in this life. We begin to think that we are greater than we really are. You know, someone sent me a video clip. You can find this in the, go to the internet. In China, there was this very famous actor. And some years ago, he won the top award. He was nominated as the best actor for the television series in China. And when he was asked to receive his trophy, he went up to receive his trophy. And unbelievable, this Chinese man went up. What would you expect him to say? In a, an atheistic, secular country like China, he went up and said, I am a Christian. I want to give thanks to God, for God made it possible that I have won this top prize. And he ended by asking the audience, I suppose mostly all non-believers, to join him in prayer when he recited the Lord's Prayer. That was his thanksgiving speech. How many of us would have the courage to stand up for Jesus and said, all my success comes from him. I'm merely an instrument of the Lord. Someone who is in China publicly proclaiming his faith in Jesus who has given him all these blessings. So that's the first reason. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, why the world says they do not need God. The second reason why the world does not believe they need a saviour is simply because the world has sufficient, the world has changed. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, in those days, we were living in difficult time. We were poor. People were dying of all kinds of diseases and illnesses. Today, we are in a better place. We have better facilities. We have food, more than enough food. We have a comfortable life. That is why when people are self-sufficient, again, they do not think of God. When people are well off, they are healthy. They take all these things for granted. The only thing that people fear today is death. Because death means the end of everything. That's the reason why people in the world today believe those who need God are those people who are weak, who are useless. Only those of you who are sickly, those of you who are miserable, those of you who are in poverty, you look forward to the next life. But for those people who are rich and have plenty, they live only for this world. And that's the third reason why people say they do not need a saviour. You look at our people today. No longer they are living for a life after death. The only world that people believed in is this world. In their minds, there is no thought of life after death. And because this is the only world they have, they want to grab everything as much as they can, enjoy all that they can enjoy. Why should they sacrifice their life for others? 
What is the purpose? Because you have this life, it is a short life, just make sure you enjoy and get everything you want out of it because once you are dead, that's the end of everything. Because the world does not believe in life after death. They don't believe in the Saviour. And if that is the case, you just have to ask yourself, what then is the purpose of living a good life, an honest life? Why do you want to sacrifice your life for the good of humanity? Because once you are dead, you are finished. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the truth today. If you were to ask, why do we need a saviour? Today, the scripture readings makes it clear. In the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, the people were in exile. They lost their land, they lost their kingdom, they lost their freedom, they lost everything. That is why they were living in a land of deep shadow. They walk in darkness. My dear brothers and sisters, when you have lost everything in life, things that are really important to you, then you come to realize that you need God. That you on your own alone cannot do without Him. We are told again in today's uh, gospel, the people again in Bethlehem, in Palestine, during the time of Jesus, the people were poor because of the political and religious institutions. They too look for freedom. And that's why Jesus came to restore them to freedom. In today's second reading, we have the people, the Gentiles. They were living a promiscuous life, a life of greed, a life of luxury, a life of dishonesty. They were doing business, but they were living a futile life. And that is the reason why St. Paul wrote to Titus, reminding them that they are called to give up their worldly ambitions and to live good and religious lives. So my dear brothers and sisters, let me sum out the nice homily. Why do we need a saviour? You will need a saviour if you come to realise your nothingness, your finiteness. Many of us, in good times, we think we are self-sufficient. Let me remind you, a day will come when you are stripped off everything like the Israelites. A day will come when you think you are somebody, when you are at the top of your career, when you think you have everything made for you. A day will come when you fall sick. No doctors can heal you. A day will come when your family will collapse, break apart that time you realize you are nobody. Only God can help you. Now you think you can do without God. And many people feel that way. The, more, the only time when they crawl back to God is when they realize their helplessness. How do you know you need a Savior? When you recognize that you are a sinner. Those of you who have lived broken lives, those of you who have broken up your families, those of you who have betrayed your loved ones, those of you who have committed serious offenses, many of you are not able to move on in life because you cannot forgive yourself. Only God can bring you forgiveness and healing. If you are not forgiven, if you are not healed, you cannot move on in life. To know that someone, and Jesus precisely, comes to give us that forgiveness. 
we are told, he sacrificed himself for us in order to set us free from all wickedness. And thirdly, those of you who are living life without meaning and purpose, those of you who are living futile life, you can be rich, you can be successful, you can have all that you want if you feel that your life is empty. Have you ever asked yourself, that's a very important question, what are you living for really? It cannot be for money because how much money do you need? It cannot be for food. How much can you eat? How many cars do you want to drive? How many beds do you want to live on? You don't need so many. Then what are you living for? Those of you who are at the top of your career, if I'm wrong, come and tell me. They will tell you. When you reach at the top of your career, you find that all these things means nothing. They cannot give you happiness. Happiness comes, as Jesus tells us, so that it could be his own have no ambition except to do good. It is only by living the kind of life that Christ showed us in giving, in serving. That is why Christmas is an invitation for us to share in the meaning and purpose of life by learning to give and to love like Jesus. Those who cannot give, cannot love. Those who cannot love, their life will remain empty. And finally, why do we need a saviour? Precisely because we are told, once again, that Jesus sacrificed his life so that we can hope for the blessing which will come with the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Christ Jesus. The truth is, this life is short. We live not just for today, but we live for tomorrow. There is a life that is yet to come. The fullness of life that Jesus has shown us through his death and resurrection. We cannot deceive ourselves like the world deceiving themselves into thinking that there is only this life on earth and when it is done, it is finished. Because Christ died and he rose from the dead. We have life hereafter. In view of this life, therefore, we are called to live this life with purpose and meaning. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. Yeah.
crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. Brothers and sisters, on this holy night, we marvel at the birth of Jesus Christ, God with us. Let us join the angels in giving glory to God and praying for peace on the earth. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> for the church, the people of God, united in joy at our Savior's birth, May our worship and praise give glory to God on high, and may our witness and ministry bring the good tidings of great joy to all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations and people on our planet, may they hear the message of the Prince of Peace and work for an end to violence, warfare, and terrorism and for reconciliation and forgiveness let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for the victims of the tsunami that hit western java and south sumatra on saturday night may those who were killed rest in the peace of the lord and may the injured the orphaned and the homeless find care shelter and help in rebuilding their lives and their homes. Let us pray to the Lord. Prayer. For new parents, may they welcome their children with joy and may their loving care and devotion open their children's minds and hearts to the love of their heavenly Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the Catholics of Singapore, May the devotion of the shepherds, the adoration of the angels, and the love of the Holy Family inspire us in our worship through the coming year. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of worship, may we allow the word that became flesh to live among us through our compassion for all God's children and through our support for the church, the living body of Christ in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, splendor of eternal light, we have revealed your majesty in the wonder of a child. 
Open our eyes to the glory of your presence in the whole of creation. Hear our prayers and remember all for whom we pray. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Let us seek God's will more wholeheartedly by praying the prayer of generosity as we say, Lord, teach me to be generous, to deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not seek for reward. Save that of knowing I do your most holy will.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing, be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is through the right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our minds, so that as we recognize in Him God made visible, we may be caught up through Him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and praying the homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night, on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior of this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, 
especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James and John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all the saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith Therefore, o Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar in heaven, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through the participation at the altar receive the most holy and body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with a sigh of faith and rest in a sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who through your sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy 
apostles and martyrs with john the baptist stephen matthias barnabas ignatius alexander marcellinus peter perpetua agatha agatha lucy agnes cecilia anastasia and all your saints admit us we beseech you into their company not weighing our merits but granting us your pardon through jesus christ our lord through whom you continue to make all these good things o lord you sanctify them fill them with life bless them and bestow them upon the us through him and with him and in him o god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Ateneste. we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ Jesus Christ who said the apostles peace I leave to you my peace I give to you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever Amen. the peace of the lord be with you always Let us all fish under the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes with the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Say the word, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Grant we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with Him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Just a brief announcement. Tomorrow, being Christmas Day, is a public holiday. Cathedral offices will be closed. Also, tomorrow's masses will be at 8.30 a.m., 10.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Please, for those who have not visited and seen our Bethlehem nativity scene at Jean-Marie Burel Annex, please do pay the visit. Our exclusive cathedral souvenirs are also on sale at the Bethlehem Village for the cathedral maintenance funds. Thank you. So we thank every one of you for coming for this celebration to mark the birth of Christ. And my prayer for all of you is that the Lord Jesus, whom we celebrate his birth, that he be born in your heart again, that your faith will be renewed, and your love for him will be increased more and more. Your knowledge of him will be deeper so that you can live your life more meaningfully, joyfully, and most of all with confidence, especially in times of trials and difficulties because the Lord has shown us the way. So we take this opportunity to thank all of you, not only for coming for this celebration, for all the many people who are involved, the arch production, the choir, the altar service, and those people who prepare the altar, and the wardens, the common minister in full strength today, you know, and so that the communion will be faster. And uh, so many people who are helping in this celebration. And we thank you so much for your time, for your generosity. And also don't forget to thank the priest as well, Monsignor Philip Heng, who works day and night. He doesn't sleep, actually. Uh, yeah, he is the most hardworking priest in the whole diocese, I think. More hardworking than the bishop. And uh, we also, not to say the other three priests are daisy, you know. Uh, uh, so we thank Monsignor Lau also, uh, Father Alex and uh, Father Anthony Marie. And they have really uh, helped to, this cathedral to grow in strength and you know uh, Monsignor Philip and has lived up to his commitment uh, to make sure the cathedral is alive and active since he took over and that was uh, I think three four years ago already you know this cathedral yeah so we thank the Lord and we continue to pray for you all and please uh, don't forget to pray for us uh, pray for your bishop because uh, uh, not easy uh. <laughs> So thank you for your prayers. Let us stand and pray. Oh, you're standing. Huh? Sorry. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice, and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who willed at the great joy of His Son's saving birth, be announced to shepherds by the angels, fill your minds with the gladness He gives, and make you heralds of His gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor, and make you share us with the church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of mighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.
we congratulate Mary our mother on having given birth to Jesus. very special way. Oh, my God. 